Salutations, creeps, perverts, and weirdos. You're watching Cindy Chopper's Horrible Hosted Features with your host, me, Cindy Chopper. <laughs> That's right, you're in for another real treat tonight. A film with far less autopsies than promised. Anatomy of a Psycho. Load your bong heavy tonight, folks, as we check in and get committed to Anatomy of a Psycho. These go to you. What's it like inside? But leave me alone. Come on, lay off. What is he, a celebrity? All I did is ask him a question. I asked you a question. What's it like inside? Get your hands off of me. You Marco's a real tough. Hey, you guys want to see a real killer here? Real killer. My brother didn't kill anybody. Your brother was a punk killer.
hold it. Do we have enough trouble without this? Still bleeding. Ted, I'm going to call the doctor. No. Listen, that's very bad. Sis, will you please shut up? You went, didn't you? Oh, Chad, I thought we'd agreed not to go. Duke asked us not to go to court or the prison. What did he say? Chet? Oh, Chet, will you please talk to me? He said that we should stay together. And love one another. What else did he say? No, oh, Pat. He was sorry for letting us down. Can you imagine let us down for everything he's done for us? He said to kiss you goodbye. Pat, what do you think he said? What time is it? 11.15. Pat, you arrive in 45 minutes. My brother's going to be dead. Oh, Chet, I know it's hard, but try not to think about it. I've finished yet. Chet? Chet? I've got to get out of here. Listen to me. Don't start running. Duke's my brother, too, and I love him. But he killed a man. And now he must pay what the law says he must pay. He didn't do it. What? He didn't do it. He didn't do it. He told me. You said that? That's right. That's crazy, Jack. I don't know why he did this to you, but he was lying. Maybe for some reason he thought you'd feel better, but he was wrong. He killed that man. Don't say that. No, he wouldn't lie to me. He raised you just like he raised me. And you know he wouldn't lie to me. Yes, please don't go. No. Not tonight. Please. Patty, let me out. No, Chad, please. Please, Patty. Please. Please. Son, don't overdo it. Dad, I wish he didn't have to die. That's not in our hands. But it was in yours. Mike, you're wrong. I've never known you to be this unreasonable before. Mike, I saw a man with a gun kill another man. It was my duty to tell what I saw. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't. Can you live with yourself knowing you're sending a man to his death? I'll just have to. Mike, you're taking this awfully hard. Is Duke Marco's brother such a close friend of yours? No, I've just seen him around school once in a while. Then what is it? Dad, I... I'm nothing. Except why could you have said that you, you weren't sure, or you couldn't see us, something? I'd be lying. Dad, I don't want to live here anymore. I don't want to see anybody or know anybody around here. Son, it was a closed trial. My testimony was confidential. Nobody knows anything about it. In an hour, it'll be a closed issue. Good night, Dad. Mike. I'm very disappointed. 
in your attitude toward me. news bulletin. Time has run out for Duke Marco, hold-up slayer of Harold Foreman. As was expected, Governor Creighton refused to grant a stay of execution and the condemned killer will die as scheduled at state prison at midnight tonight. As the last seconds of Duke Marco's life draw to a close, what are the thoughts in the mind of the condemned man? Does he feel remorse for his brutal crime as he tries to make his peace with God? As the state prepares to exact the extreme penalty for an act of murder, this reporter has cause to reflect on the crime and the criminal. I've been here before. 
Okay, get where you belong. Let us help. Do as I say. Chet, maybe we Do what I told you. All right, now you watch for trouble. And why didn't you? Is it because of... Mickey, are you ashamed of me? Ashamed of you? Honey, is that what you've been thinking? I've been so worried. Honey, it's, it's my fault. I thought you didn't want to see me anymore, did or that you were embarrassed. I mean, nothing could make me ever feel that way. Then why didn't you call Mickey? Well... Please, won't you tell me what's the matter? Honey, it's something about my father that you don't know. He doesn't want us to see each other anymore, huh? No, it's nothing like that. Look, let's forget it. We're back together again, and that's all that counts. I think we have a few things to talk about. Patty, I got a lot of things on my mind. Oh, I have two and I want to talk about them. Now let me eat in peace, huh? Oh, look, Chet. I never see you anymore except when you come home to eat. Couldn't we at least talk now? See you at the shack. Oh, okay. We'll see you. Well, thanks, Pat. Listen, I've been thinking. I'd like to see you go back to school. You know, listen, I'm a girl. I don't need to go. I could get a job and you could quit yours. Things are just fine the way they are. No, they're not, Chad. There are some things that you don't seem to understand about Duke. He wasn't like what you think. He's dead. Can't you leave him alone? Oh, Chet, you've turned him into some sort of crusading hero. He wasn't like that. He kept us out of an orphanage. He raised us. He didn't have to do that. Don't you think I know that? But I also know how he did it. What's the difference? He's my brother, and what he did, he did for us. Duke was a hoodoo. He beat people. He robbed them. And he finally even killed a man. You ate his food. You lived in his house and you spent his money. I was a kid. 
it just like you. What did you expect me? You're a hypocrite, a lousy hypocrite. I gotta get out of here. If anybody else would say the things you said, I'd kill them. Chet, Chet, please stop it. Whatever you're gonna do, please stop. For me. All right, then, not for me, for Duke. From here on in, everything I do is for Duke. Try and understand. If you can't, just leave me alone. And too well, Chet. Go up before it's too late. Hello? Hi, honey, this is Mickey. Oh, Mickey? Yeah, I'm gonna talk to you. Could you come over? Let's take a ride or something. Too late. Shh, wake my mother up. If you don't get out here, I'm going to wake the whole neighborhood up. Wait a So, baby, what do you say? I feel the same way. Besides, I have a new friend now. A new friend? son of Lawrence Baker, city district attorney, was found last night the victim of a brutal beating. Hey, Chet, you brute, you. <laughs> <laughs> Investigating officers have ruled out a robbery motive since Baker's wallet and watch were untouched. Oh, wow, we forgot the bread. Come on, knock it off. What's the matter, Chet? Cool it, Mom. Marco. So, what do you want from me? Well, he's a friend of mine. I know all the Chet's friends. Take off. All right, let him in, Mo. You know this flower? Yeah, I know him. Chet, can I talk to you? All right, talk. Well, it's a little personal. Well, what about? Well, we just step outside. I think he wants to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. I don't think I like you. 
Give me the word, Chet. I'll throw him out. What do you want, Mickey? But Pat wanted me to ask if you'd like to go to a party this afternoon. Party? That's marvelous. What time are you picking us up? Are my friends invited? Well, it's not my party. I couldn't do that. Well, I don't go anywhere without my friends, Mickey. Hey, would you invite us if it were your party? No, I don't think I would. Look, the party's at Arthur Brennan's house. Now, you can go with Pat and me, or you can go alone. Arthur Brennan's house? Look, Chet said you don't go where his friends aren't welcome. I like you less and less. And I'm heartbroken. Look at Clown, I came to talk to Chet. You came to my house. All right, easy. Chet! Oh, okay. All right, easy. Oh. Chet! Well, you never know these days when you're going to get a laugh. I thought I'd break you boys up. You're a million laughs, Lieutenant. <laughs> How are you? Oh, here's the new face. I, uh, I hope I wasn't interrupting something. What is this, the Pentagon? You know, I live here. <laughs> Chet, as far as the party, the invitation still goes. And I hope I see you real soon. Anytime, punk. But don't come to my house again. Unless you bring Pat. Look, you mentioned Pat once more, and I'll be here a lot sooner. Hey, rough guys invading the territory, Lieutenant. I may need your protection. A Marine veteran need protection? I doubt that. Uh, you come here to shoot the breeze, Lieutenant? Yeah, sure. What else? You look a little unhappy. Well, now that you mention it, Chet, I am, as a matter of fact. Pretty terrible thing happened yesterday. Yeah? Yes, the boy got roughed up quite a bit. On my beat, no less. And to make matters worse, he's the DA's son. The powers that be are awful disturbed. That's real tough. Yes. Yes. I see you already know about it. Yeah, we uh, we read the headlines. Is that all you know? That's all. Buy the papers every day, keep up with the news, huh? Look back. Circulation's 180,000. A lot of people buy papers. We were just looking to see where we could go to the movies. Yeah, well, that's a nice idea. Tell me, fellas, have any of you ever seen this before? Uh, put it on again, Lieutenant. It's an improvement. <laughs> No, well, you've got a real wit about you. <laughs> it's an improvement. That's a good one, huh? <laughs> Lieutenant. Yeah. We don't know anything about the DA son or the mask. <laughs> Dickie, could I trouble you for a glass of water, please? Sure. I suppose you fellas can account for your whereabouts yesterday about six. Six? You were here, weren't we, Danny? Yeah, you went home about 6.30. You got witnesses? Sure. Mo, Danny, Pete, Dick, and Bobby. Well, how are you, Bobby? I hardly noticed you there. Oh, okay. Any other questions? No, no, I, I guess none. But if you should happen to hear of anything that might help. Hey, try the scorpions. They're real tough stuff. <laughs> I know they are, no thanks. <laughs> hey, Lieutenant, it behooves me to ask one question. Did you check the mask for fingerprints? Yes. Go on, Eddie. Hey, Chet, what movie did you decide on? Crime and Punishment. That's a real good movie. I don't like the heat waltzing into my pad. Well, don't sweat it. He all but told us he doesn't have anything on us. If he's on his way now to bug somebody else. Mo, you know who Arthur Brennan is? No. He didn't invite me to his party. He's Judge Brennan's son. I'm going to that party. Who's there? Oh, it's me, Dad. What is it? Something happened to the car? No, everything's all right. Can you come out here a minute? Okay, Mike. So nervous, I don't know what to say to him. <laughs> Just say hello, Mr. Craig. Something must be wrong. I... Well, why didn't you tell... I beg your pardon, man. Dad, this is Pat, the girl I was telling you about. I want you to meet her. Well, sure, son, as soon as I get halfway presentable. Well, let's go in the living room. Oh, honey, sit down. <laughs> no, I'm fine, thanks. Golly, this is beautiful. 
Maybe Chet and I had had something like this instead of... Honey, we'll fix it. Oh, Dad. Dad, this is Pat. How do you do, Mr. Craig? How do you do? Nikki and I have been talking about meeting you. <laughs> now I don't know what to say. Pat, I like you already. Sit down. You have a beautiful home. Thank you. Nothing fancy. Where do you live? Oh, <laughs> it's nothing fancy. Mike, you may have your faults, but Pat certainly isn't one of them. You come from a large family, Pat? No, just me and my brother, Chet. Chet? Mike, when are you going to learn to make a proper introduction? I don't even know Pat's last name. It's Marco, Mr. Craig. Patricia and Marco. Piano, Pat? Well, I used to, a little. Mike's mother played beautifully. Would you excuse me a moment? Well, honey, how do you like him? Oh, he knows about me. Oh, Mike, can I see you a minute? Everything's going to be fine. Sure, Dad. A guy who is already crazy completely loses it in all of its B-film overacting glory. I think this movie thinks it's really deep and complex. Dad, please, I know what you're gonna say, but I wanted you to get to know her before I told you she was Duke's sister. I don't like it. Does she know I was a witness? Dad, I'll tell her when the time is right. Mike, I'm not a prudish man. But this girl's brother was a killer. How much do you know about her? How serious is this relationship? It's real serious. And Dad, please, let me handle it my way. Dad, Mike, please. My way. Son, this is going to cause us all a great deal of heartaches. But all right, your way. Okay, honey, party time. some of the kids around here, why don't I just walk around? Well, at least you could have worn a tie. Chad, have fun. Oh, Chet, old man. Glad you could make it. We thought you might turn us down or something. Yeah, well, thanks for inviting me, Arthur. I wouldn't have missed this whole thing for the world. Well, thank Mickey, it was his idea. Bring a date? No, my girl's a little unpredictable. 
You never know where she might show up. But you've got to keep your eyes open, old man. Yeah, have you two met? Yeah, I think so. I think I've seen her around. And I wouldn't want to hold you up, Chet. Why not circulate a little bit? Yeah. I'll see you around. talk to you. Now listen, and listen carefully. My father was the one that saw Duke kill that other man. He was the prosecution's eyewitness. Oh, Mickey. Yeah, this would drive me nuts trying to tell you. I don't know what to say. I feel numb. I don't feel angry or, or hurt. It doesn't matter. I know he did what he had to. Listen, Pat, will you marry me? Yes, yourself, baby. I hate him, but not because of you. Because you can't be trusted. I'm crushed. Look, Chad, I don't want you anymore. I want this. All of this. Pebbles will bounce off these windows just as well now, won't they? No, Chad, you would not hear. Why not? I'm sure Arthur won't mind. He's a swell guy. You Arthur boy. I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. No, Arthur! Arthur, don't please! Please don't fight me! Yes! Yes, let me go! Arthur! Arthur! Arthur, please, please let me! I did it! I did it! 
Arthur, darling, I'm sorry, Arthur. I didn't mean it, Arthur, please. I'm darling, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it. Uh, Arthur, 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 please. Don't you, Mac? Well, Judge is a very important man, you know. Too, too big cop? Uh, Chet, I think I'll see you back at the shack. Easy, Bobby. Listen, Chet, I don't know who set that fire. Right now, it's an impossible thing to tell, but let me tell you this. You better straighten out before you can't anymore. You get some kind of hate gnawing at you. And if you're not careful, it's going to tear you apart inside. I've seen it happen before. Look, Mac, when you can put the old braces on me, come and get me, huh? I'll tell them to stay off of my back. Roll a soup, Mo? No. I want to get washed. Get out of here. Want to come along? No, I don't think so. Want some soup? Matches. you hanging around me anymore. What are you mad at me for? There's going to be trouble. Chet, why are you doing all this? You know why? They killed Duke. See, I never knew my father or my mother. All 
all I had was Duke. They took him away and they killed him. What am I supposed to do? Let him kick me too? Yeah, they'd like that. You know that party I was at today at the judge's house? They had things there that cost more than Duke ever begged, borrowed, or stole in his whole life. Any one of those lousy paintings or statues. You know what you said about needing someone to look up to? Trusting somebody? Well, I guess you're the one I look up to and trust. You better get out of here. What do you want now, punk? No trouble from you. I want to talk to Chet. Look, I told you I didn't want you around here. Now get out of here. Gently, Mo. Chet, let's take a ride or something. Leave me alone. Chet, Pat and I are getting married. Marry her, but don't talk to me about it. Chet, come on with me. You'll feel a lot better. Look, listen to me, Chet. I've got to tell you something that's going to hurt. The eyewitness at your brother's trial was my father. He had to tell the truth. Try to understand, Chet. Duke? Duke, did you hear that? <laughs> and you're, you're going to marry Pat? Get out of my way, Mo. I've been waiting for this. but he wouldn't let me. He's moved to the shack. I feel sorry for Chet. After what he's done to you? Honey, he's so mixed up. They're bound to see it. Have you seen my dad? Almost every day. I'll stick with him. It's a very rough time for him. I think this will all be over in a couple of weeks and seem like a bad dream. I love you. I wish you were holding me in your arms right now. Honey, I am.
21st Judicial District is now open and in session. The Honorable Albert J. Riley presiding. Are you ready, Mr. Baker? Yes, Your Honor. The state calls Detective Lieutenant William McGowan. Lieutenant William McGowan, will you come forward and be sworn? You do solemnly swear by the ever-living God that the testimony you are about to give in the case now in hearing before the court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. You see. <coughs> Lieutenant, do you recall an argument that you witnessed at the home of Mo Caruso between the defendant, Mickey Craig, and the deceased on the afternoon of the deceased's death? Yes, sir, if it can be called an argument. Would you explain to the court the circumstances leading to that altercation? Well, when I got there, the defendant was already getting ready to leave. He told Mo that he looked forward to meeting him again. Would you say that Mickey Craig's tone was friendly when he said this? No, not exactly. It was some kind of threat, all right, but not anything you take seriously. Obviously, you were wrong, Lieutenant. Objection. Sustained. The reporter will strike the prosecutor's last remark from the record, and the jury is instructed to disregard the remark. Did the defendant say anything else? Yes, he said that if Mo ever mentioned Pat's name again, that he, the deceased, would see him again sooner than he might expect. And then Mo told Mickey never to come back to his house again, and Mickey left. Did Mo say anything to you? Yes. He said he might need my protection, but I thought he was joking. You've made that quite clear, Lieutenant. Bobby, how long have you known Chet Marco? Nearly three years. When was the first time you went to Moe's shack? About the same time as I met Chet. Was Chet the person who first brought you there? Yes, sir. Would you say that of all the boys in the shack, Chet was your best friend? Yes. Would you say that Chet Marco was your best friend, including all the boys at school, or anywhere else for that matter? I guess so. Bobby, do you understand the meaning of the word perjury? Yes, sir. In lying under oath. Do you further understand that it's a felony for which a person can go to jail for several years or longer? I know. I ask you then to tell the facts as they really happened, rather than attempting to corroborate the testimony of your friend Chet Marco. I told the truth. Everything Chet said was the way it happened. I know it's easy to say, but try not to be discouraged, huh? Okay, Mike. And I'll see you as soon as I can. Right. Carl, I'm frightened. Every piece of testimony is being twisted to make Mike look guilty. It's all right, Frank. We've still got a chance. Well, what happened to Bobby? I don't know. I couldn't get to him. He doesn't have enough motive for lying. Chet's our only chance, huh? Yes, but I'll crack him yet. Think you can do it? I'll keep him on the stand a week if I have to. In your own words, Miss Marco, would you tell the court what Mickey said? M Mickey said that he was going up to the shack to see Chet. That he wanted to tell him that we were going to get married. Yes. And to tell him that his father was key witness at Duke's trial. And so when Chet testified earlier that Mickey came to the shack to fight with Mo, he was not telling the truth. Your Honor, I object, in your opinion. No, he was lying. Oh, Chet, please, please tell him the truth. Please. Order. Counsel will instruct the witness. No further questions, Your Honor. Your witness. Now, Miss Barco, 
I agree that someone is lying in this trial. You were not at the shack at the time of Moe's death. Consequently, you, like the rest of us, can determine only in your own mind the events of that evening through the testimony presented in this trial. I know Mickey wouldn't lie. You know the witness, Bobby Brown? Yes. Have you ever known him to lie? Well, well, Bobby's all mixed up. He thinks he's helping Chet. Why would he want to help Chet? Because he likes Chet. Because, well, because Chet's been sort of like an older brother to him. Then you'll agree with me that an honest person might lie, even under oath, to protect someone whom they love? Yes, that's why Bobby's lying. And don't you have an even greater motive for lying than Bobby, Miss Marco? No. Aren't you in love with the defendant? Yes. Aren't you planning to marry the defendant? But I'm telling the truth. You're twisting everything I'm saying. Oh, if you want to be tried to settle it. <laughs> And you still insist that Moe's death was an accident? That's the way it happened. I picked up the knife so Moe wouldn't get it. He jumped at me and fell on the knife. Are you aware that the deceased was an ex-Marine? Yes, sir. And you are also aware that he had undergone intensive hand-to-hand -hand combat training? I guess so. And yet you want this court to believe that a man with his training in his struggle with you was so careless as to inflict a fatal wound on himself? That's the way it happened. If it was an accident, why did you run out? Why didn't you call a doctor? I was scared. I guess I panicked. Yes, you were frightened. And I submit, with good reason. Now, Mr. Marco, let's get a few facts straight, shall we? Yes, sir. Let's take the night in question when Mickey Craig came to the shack. Isn't it true that when Mickey told you that it was his father who'd been the witness at your brother's trial, you started raving and calling your dead brother? And that you then proceeded to beat Mickey with your fists? No, sir. Didn't you scream to your brother in this manner, Duke, I've got the witness, I've got the witness? My brother's dead. And isn't it all so true? That when Mickey tried to leave, he was intercepted by Moe, and in the ensuing struggle, Moe was accidentally killed? I wish it were true. You see, Mickey's my friend, and he's going to marry my sister. I wish we could all go home now, that Moe was still alive instead of being dead. But Moe is dead, and I can't lie. So everything I said on this stand is the truth. Didn't you swear to get revenge on the men you held responsible for your brother's execution? No. I was sore at first. But then I realized my brother got full justice of the court. And I'm not sore at anybody anymore. Order. Order. The defense rests, Your Honor. You may step down, please. Jury, have you selected your foreman? Yes, I'm foreman of the jury. Have you arrived at your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. You will please pass your verdict to the bailiff. You will listen to the reading of your verdict. We find the defendant, Michael Craig, guilty of first-degree murder. The case will be continued, and 
the defendant returned to the court for sentencing on September 28th. The court is now adjourned. I'd like to talk to Chet for a few minutes. You want to come along? Well, I'll go with you, but I don't want to talk to him. I don't even want to see him. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll just be a few minutes, then I'll take you home, all right? Okay. I keep thinking. 
if I'd only kept my mouth shut at Duke Marco's trial, none of this would have happened. Dad, Duke was guilty. I'm innocent. You do believe me, don't you, Dad? Never doubt that, Mike. Dad, tomorrow they're going to tell me whether I... I spend the rest of my life in prison or... or die in the gas chamber. Dad, I'm scared. Mr. Craig? at me. Where are you going, Chet? Never mind. Look, go someplace, huh? To a movie? All right, Pat. I'll only be a minute. Go in there and see Chet alone. Please. You sure that's what you want to do? Yeah. Okay, Pat. Out of here, Pat. Not till you hear what I have to say to you. I'm not interested in what you have to say to me. Mickey forgives you, Chet. He doesn't even blame you. He asked me to get you to a doctor before it's too late. Isn't that a riot, Chet? Before it's too late. I'll tell you what's a riot. Mickey, you, Mac, you all think I'm cracked. Look around. You don't see no bars here. Oh, yes, I do, Chet. Twisted and gnawed inside that brain. I'm finally beginning to understand what Mickey meant. You know, I'm not like him, Chet. I can't forgive you so easily. I'm glad you're going to live your life twisted up inside. You finished? Yes, I'm finished. Whether Mickey dies in a gas chamber or spends the rest of his life in that prison cell, my life is finished. The only thing I can do is hate you with all my heart as long as I live. Get out. I feel sorry for you, Bobby. I hope someday you wake up and understand what you've helped him to do. Patty, get out of here! here, both of you.
Lieutenant. Chet doesn't know what he's doing anymore. I know, Bobby. Bobby, I want you to tell me the truth. Chet killed Mo, didn't he? Yes. Contributed to this screenplay under the pseudonym Larry Lee. Pieces of Planet Nine from Outer Space's original score can be heard in this not so classic disaster piece. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel and share with all the creeps, perverts, and weirdos in your death. I mean life. You can find links to my social media and website in the description below. And remember, I'm Cindy Chopper. 
And I like dead things. Filming. We're filming. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And... Here we go. Filming three.